Thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, great. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Okay, let's start. Huh? Uh, maybe we start with a word of prayer. Okay. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for a wonderful evening, Lord. Coming together, Lord, to learn from your word, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, that your word will speak to our hearts, Lord, and cause a real transformation in our lives, Lord. We give you all the honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, you can see my screen. It's all good. Okay, great. So uh, today we're going to continue uh, on the core values uh, of, our, of our church. C-H-I-P-S, uh, H, uh, meaning uh, honoring, okay? Uh, it's on the screen there, okay? Uh, the definition uh, uh, by dictionary is there. Uh, it means high respect or great esteem. You see, we are a community that is transformed uh, by this grace. And, uh, and I think that is our mission statement, right? Uh, or vision statement. Uh, tell me which one is it, okay? And uh, we are impacting nations uh, all around us. And uh, we are also a community uh, of His grace that lives by His Spirit uh, uh, indwelling uh, in us, influencing our behavior and our thoughts and our actions. You know? So our core values uh, uh, the church has uh, are the five elements, uh, uh, which actually carries the word C-H-I-P-S, chips. Uh, why chips? Uh, if you recall, uh, Pastor Peter uh, mentioned that chips because it's, uh, it is likened to the word chip of the old block, uh, meaning that uh, our lives should imitate Christ. Uh, we should follow Christ. And uh, interestingly, last week we learned that, uh, to me, I can summarize in these uh, two, two important points, uh, that we are in Christ. Uh, we speak about our location. Our location has changed. Uh, today we are in Christ. And the next one is that Christ is in us. And Christ in us uh, speaks to us about the transformation uh, that uh, he wants to do uh, in our lives itself. So meaning that when we become a community uh, that uh, has, uh, uh, has the, the core values uh, of honoring, uh, we have high respect uh, and great esteem uh, towards God and his ways, you know. And this translated into the actions uh, that we do uh, it reflects to the belief system uh, that we are in. Amen? Okay? Uh, you might ask, okay? So why honoring? Uh, I'd like to start off as by saying that we honor uh, because we have a living, a breathing, and a warm relationship uh, with our God. Amen? He is a living God, and He is living in us, impacting our lives, you know. Uh, in fact, it is, it is so real that his heart becomes our heart, you know. His desires becomes our desires. In Ezekiel 36, 26, it says that, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. So we have a new heart, church. We have a new spirit. And the, and, and the Lord says, uh, continue, says, I will remove uh, from your heart the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And this is our new heart, you know. And the new heart is that God is living, is breathing, and he is actually in us, you know, influencing uh, every part of our lives. And uh, the next part is that, why honoring? Because it is the Lord's command. Uh, in First Peter, uh, in First Peter uh, 3, 15, it says, but in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. You know, so it's the Lord's command, you know. So we honor the Lord, uh, uh, not because we want to arm twist him uh, for some form of uh, favor or some form of uh, duty that we need to perform, you know. We honor the Lord because uh, it is actually uh, of course, it's his command, but we also honor because it is our recognition and respect uh, uh, and gratitude towards him uh, who loves us so much. Amen? So, since our response uh, is in gratitude, you know, uh, what should follow is that we should follow and align with his ways and in his word, uh, with his word also. 
In Ephesians 5 verse 1, it says, Follow God's example, therefore, as his dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So we follow the Lord's example. We follow his ways, you know. And when we do that, we are aligned uh, to what he loves, to what God loves. And also, we are also aligned to what he hates or he dislikes in us, you know. And this is what we call a character that we imitate the Lord, you know. Remember, we are chips in the core value, C-H-I-P-S, right? You know what C-H-I-P-S, right? Okay, so the chip of the O-block, uh, it means that we imitate the Lord. Yeah? So uh, as we align, we begin to imitate. So I'd like to ask this question uh, to all of you here. Uh, I know many of you know the answer. Huh? Can I just ask, uh, maybe as you are here right now, does God say that you are an honorable person? What do you think? Is that a yes or no? I think you know the answer, right? It is a resounding uh, yes, okay? In 2 Peter 1.17, uh, he, Jesus, uh, Jesus received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory saying, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased, you know? So the, the, the verse in 1 John 4.17, he says that as Jesus is, so are we. So if Jesus is honorable today, all of you here, all of us in TNCC, all of us who are believers of Jesus, we are honorable to him. Amen? As he is, so are we in this world. Okay? And you know what? God sees you with high esteem. The Lord delights in you. God delights in you. Uh, in Psalms 147, 11, it says that the Lord delights in those who fear him, you know. And the word fear him, it means to revere, to honor, and to respect. Uh, who put their hope in his unfailing love. So God sees you with high esteem, you know. So if he sees us with high esteem, he delights in us, you know. We should find out, uh, uh, because the word, the, the word here says, in those who revere him. So we should find out, what are the things uh, that God uh, revered? Uh? So we should find out how do we uh, honor the Lord uh, in, in this aspect uh, of our lives, okay? So I have actually uh, put it into uh, three categories uh, that we can look into as we honor the Lord, uh, uh, three function of our core values of honoring, you know? Remember, we are honoring the Lord because of a living God that is living in us, you know, uh, influencing us, impacting our lives and outcomes, you know, the heart of gratitude that we want to honor the Lord. But it's not just honor the Lord, you know. We also would like to honor others also. As a community, uh, we all can function uh, to honor one another. Life is not just about us only. In fact, it is Christ's command that there is a cost to follow him. And that cost is to deny ourselves. And the third part is that we should also look into honoring ourselves, you know, uh, to take care of ourselves. It means uh, it is an important thing that we understand firmly that our position uh, in Christ is firm today. It is established already, you know. So we should continue uh, in the faith uh, likewise, okay? So let's look into the first one, uh, whereby we are looking into honoring God. Uh. So can I encourage you at this time? Uh, I know you are at your home, uh, some of you at your couch, or maybe some of you joining uh, somewhere in office or something like that. Uh, can I encourage you at this time uh, to prayerfully? Uh, we're going to go through uh, a few scriptures. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, quite a lot of scriptures, you know. And I pray that uh, that you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Perhaps now you can quieten down your hearts, quieten down yourself, uh, and uh, be on the receive mode uh, to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you as uh, we go through the verses. Uh. You see, the Word of God is powerful, uh, and we want to allow the Holy Spirit uh, to work in us. Uh. So let us allow God to 
speak to us as we listen to what he has to say. Okay? So, honoring God uh, uh, is actually an amazing uh, picture here uh, that we see in the Revelations 4, that all creation honors the Lord, including us. Uh, uh, all creation gives him honor. Revelations 4, it says here, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive honor, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things. And by your will, they were created and have their being. Uh, Revelation 4 uh, specifically says that we are all God's creation. And because we are his creation, we give him honor, right? He is our creator itself. So how do we honor God? Okay, we honor God by honoring his son, Jesus. Amen. We honoring uh, we honor God by honoring His Son Jesus. Uh, John five twenty three. It says that that all may honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. And whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent Him. Father God has handed all authority to Jesus, so that the Son will be honored equally with the Father. And it says from this verse, it says that if anyone dishonors the Son. It actually dishonors the father too. And it's also the decision of the father to put the son in the place of honor. Amen. So it is God's decision to put the son at the same level as him, you know, that he may receive the honor. So we should honor Jesus as we honor God. Next is that we look into, we honor God by serving him. Amen. Okay. John 12, 26, he says that uh, we serve the Lord by following him. He says, whoever serves me must follow me, you know. Uh, and where I am, my servant will be also. So the verse says that in highlight, you must highlight the word, we must follow Jesus, you know. As we serve Jesus, we are actually following Jesus. There is a song uh, uh, which normally in... Uh, baptism service uh, is uh, being sung. It says, uh, I have decided to follow Jesus. Right? And that song simply means that uh, it's a declaration that we will follow uh, uh, Jesus as we serve him. You know? uh, it also means that our lives, our motives, our intention, our purpose are all aligned with Jesus. And you look at it here. The last part of that verse, it says, my father, which, which, which means that Father God will honor anyone who serves Jesus, anyone who serves him. Amen? Next is that we honor God by believing in God himself. Amen? So this is the third point here. John 6, 29, it says that there is only one work that we do, okay? And it's honorable, okay? And it's honoring God also, which is to believe in the one that God has sent. And who, he, who, who is that person? His name is Jesus. This is the only work that we do to believe, you know. Uh, in fact, the work is finished. You know? uh, Jesus has said, it is finished. Everything has been done, you know. We have been set free. All we need to do to receive the blessing of the Lord is to believe in him. Amen. Hebrews 11 verse 6, it says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Can I just ask here, uh, maybe from uh, uh, your here, huh? what do you understand uh, or maybe what is faith? Is faith belief? Is belief faith? You know, I used to think that I how to differentiate this, you know. Oh yeah. Uh, faith, belief, belief, faith, you know. But they are actually two different things altogether, you know. And the prerequisite for belief is actually faith. Faith is none other uh, uh, and is defined as uh, it is the persuasion of God's love in your life. You see, church, if we are persuaded by the love of God, we are persuaded 
by the love of God, you know, something happened in our lives, you know, something changes. Uh, it gives us the uh, confidence. It establishes our belief uh, system, you know. So as we are continuously persuaded, you know, uh, then we believe uh, in Jesus. Uh, we believe in the one that God has sent. And by believing God, we honor God in return. Amen. Okay, so let's move on. The next is that uh, we honor the Lord by believing His Son, uh, by believing Jesus Himself. Okay, John 6 uh, 40, uh, it says that uh, for my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up in the last day. You know, you know, there is this thing whereby. Uh, uh, it is known, uh, I think uh, some of you would have known also, you know, that uh, even in the Christian circle, you know, that people uh, do not acknowledge the sonship uh, uh, or they, don't, they do not acknowledge Jesus. They know that there is a God. But in certain circles, they, they say that, oh, there is, there is no such thing as uh, God the Son, you know. How can God can have the Son, you know. Let's not go there, okay. But you know what? In this scripture here, it says that, you know, that it honors God when we believe Jesus, you know. And TNCC, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad, you know, that we, we believe that Jesus, you know, is the only way, you know, which we have our salvation, you know. In fact, you know, we have our faith, you know. Uh, we are saved by grace, true faith, you know. And we believe that through his death, his resurrection, and his ascension, that our lives receive uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of Christ. And this verse here in Galatians 2.20, it says that we believe that we have been crucified with Christ today. And today, each one of us here, it is no longer who we live, but it is Christ who lives in us. And the life that which now we live, you know, we live in the body, we live by faith. See that word again? We live by faith, which is the persuasion of His love uh, in our life. You know, we live by His persuasion in the Son of God, who what? Who loved us and gave Himself for us. Okay? Next is that we honor the Lord by believing His Word. Okay? And this is an amazing uh, verse here in 2 Timothy 3.16. It says that all Scripture is god brief and it is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting and training. You know, as we believe in the Word of God, we allow the Word of God to teach us. We allow the Word of God uh, to correct us and perhaps to allow the Word of God to rebuke us, uh, to cause a repentance, a metanoia, that we will turn uh, from the ways that we used to do uh, which is displeased in him and align back uh, uh, ourselves to him, to what he loves, you know. And it's also for those uh, uh, who are pursuing uh, in ministry or even uh, in his word, it is used for training uh, in understanding the righteousness of God. As we believe that his word uh, is able to teach, rebuke and correct or even train us, it honors the Lord. It gives honor to God and to Jesus. Amen. John 20, 31, it says that, but these are written. What are these? These are the word of God. These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, guess what? You may have life in his name. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's move on. Okay. The next thing is that uh, we want to look into is uh, on the practical side of honoring God, okay, which is actually with our wealth, okay. And the word here is money, yeah, okay, uh, M O N E Y. The emphasis here is money, you know. Uh, we know that we serve with our time uh, and energy yeah, in ministry. Uh, but I believe uh, that uh, 2 Corinthians 9, uh, verses uh, 6 to 8. He's talking about uh, money. Yeah? He says here, remember this, whoever 
that sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously, whoever gives your money generously, the word here underline, uh, generously, will also reap generously. You know? And how do we give generously? Verse 7, it says that, that each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. And the attitude is that uh, we honour the Lord with money, uh, with our wealth, is that when we give, we don't give reluctantly. Or even uh, someone or something is uh, uh, forcing us or under compulsion. Why? Because the word says, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? And we, when, we, when we give cheerfully and generously, verse 8 says that God will bless you abundantly so that uh, in all things and at all times, uh, as we give money, you know, you have all that you need and you will abound in every good work. It's amazing uh, that the scripture here encourages us to give our money. And uh, if you recall in the book of Matthew, uh, there is a parable of this young man uh, that he approached uh, Jesus. And he says, he asked, the, he, asked, he asked the Lord, he says that, he says, Rabbi, he says, uh, teacher, uh, he, is, he asks, you know, uh, what must I do to have eternal life? And, uh, and the Lord, and Jesus said, you know, uh, these are the commandments, you know, that you, you, you need to. And, you know, his quick answer, he says, I've done all these things. But we soon found out that he actually walked away uh, very sad, you know. And we know why he, he, he walked away from the Lord. Because Jesus said one thing uh, that we still lack, you know. Uh, you need to give away your wealth. And it is clear that he was sad because he could not give away his wealth. And Jesus said after that, there is this verse, he says that it is easier for the camel to enter the needle than the rich young man enter God's kingdom. You know what it means? It means that it is impossible, right? For this young man, because a uh, rich young man, because he could not uh, uh, give away uh, the wealth which uh, he holds uh, so dearly uh, in his life. You know, church, I want to encourage you that uh, uh, let us learn from this lesson uh, as we, and from this verse also, from the word of God, that we can uh, purpose in our heart to give. And as we give, let's give cheerfully, uh, not reluctantly or under compulsion. And the Lord will bless you. You know, if only the young man uh, would give, you know, and then he saw this verse, you know, the Lord is ready, you know, to bless him. Uh, multiple times, you know. Uh, so, uh, but we know uh, that, that, that that story, you know, that he walked away sad. Okay? So let's move on. Uh, we honor the Lord uh, with our talents. Uh, sorry, with our hearts. Uh. Oops, I accidentally say the next one. <laughs> okay, we honor the Lord with our hearts. Okay? And uh, and this is uh, uh, another story from uh, Matthew chapter 15. And this is where uh, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. And in this uh, parable, uh, the, the teachers of the law uh, caught the disciple, you know, as uh, they were eating. He said, hey, you never wash your hand, you know. It is the tradition that you must actually wash your hand. And Jesus answered the teachers of the law. He says that, oh, uh, why do you say need to wash your hand by tradition? Okay. Uh, do you know that uh, uh, there is this uh, that your practice of uh, the money which was set aside for your parents, you know, uh, by the law that you're supposed to give it to 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 your parents. But guess what? Uh, because of tradition, uh, you use this uh, simple phrase uh, called uh, "I want to dedicate uh, this money uh, to to the Lord," you know. But uh, then then so therefore I don't have to give to my parents, you know. So then Jesus brought the law to them and says that because you do that, you already dishonor uh, the law which says that you need to honor your father and your mother and you have actually broken uh, the commandment which is even worse uh, than washing of hands. 
And then comes this verse that Jesus said in Matthew 15, verse 8. He said, these people, uh, he's referring to the Pharisees and the, and the teachers of law, you know, these people honor me with their lips only, cakap only lah, uh, but their hearts are far away, you know, talk one thing, but do another, you know, and it's all about what traditions, it's all about work, you know, uh, in fact, their heart is never about people, you know, uh, and we look into the Bible, we see also uh, in, 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 in the many uh, part and in the gospel, it says that there is no compassion from the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Uh, no help rendered, you know, when, when there is someone in need, you know, when it's a Sabbath day, you're not supposed to heal, you know, so there is no compassion. So Jesus is saying that, you know, that these people, uh, they honor with their lips, but their hearts is actually different. In fact, uh, Jesus is also saying uh, in, in another way uh, that if you uh, spend uh, time long enough with someone, uh, you will know what is in their hearts. Right? Because the Pharisees and Sadducees were following him. And for a long time, for the whole three years, remember? Uh, we think to catch him uh, for every opportunity, you know? to find fault uh, uh, in every opportunity. You know, if we spend time sometimes uh, uh, long enough with someone, we perhaps can hear what is in our hearts, what is in their hearts. So the question is that, what is in your heart today? You know, uh, are we aligning our heart to the heartbeat of God? You know, what is the Lord's heartbeat? You know, the heartbeat of God is to help people, you know, to have compassion to people, right? Proverbs 3, verse 5, it says here that we trust the Lord with all our heart and we do not lean on our own understanding, right? And the word heart there, uh, uh, the, the Greek word it says cardia, which actually our English word derives cardio, right? Okay, and it speaks about the soul or our mind or the center of our understanding, the will and character. And we should trust the Lord with all uh, our soul, our mind, uh, with all of our understanding, you know, and we do not lean on our own understanding. This is the change that we, 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 we are embarking in, you know. And you know what? As we do that, as we trust the Lord with our hearts, you know, we honor God itself, right? Amen. Okay, let's move on. Okay, the next one is that we honor God uh, with our time. Okay, and uh, most of us will look at it from this angle and say that, okay, we honor God with our time. It means that, okay, we are setting aside uh, our time uh, for, for maybe 10%. Okay, I'm just going to uh, set aside for ministry uh, of 24 hours, you know. But let's look into what the Lord has to say, uh, what the Word of God has to say. It says, walk in wisdom towards outsider, making the best use of the time, uh, Colossians 4 verse 5. And then the definition here, it says that to walk with wisdom of God as you live before the unbelievers and make it your duty to make Him known. So what do we use our time for? You know, in Good News Translation, it says that we make use our time, you know, to share the gospel to the unbelievers. Amen. Uh, Jonathan, just now uh, at the beginning of this uh, webinar, I was just reading out the announcements, you know, there is mission trips to the Orang Asli settlements uh, uh, in, the, in the coming months. Sign up. You know, making use of your time. Perhaps you can join uh, Pastor Susan also in Medan. You know, she has a Bible school there. You know, or maybe... You can bring an unbelieving friend or family to CG, to the community group, and that's a good place for you, you know. So can I challenge you uh, uh, and everyone here uh, today that we make the use, good use of our time, perhaps this year, that perhaps that you can bring one person to church, that you can share the gospel to one person. Can you do that? Amen. Okay, now the next thing is uh, something uh, the NCC is very, very good at. Uh, we, we have uh, almost everyone uh, uh, using their talents uh, 
uh, serving the Lord, okay? And you know what? It honors God, you know? Uh, in Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30, it says that for whoever uh, has and these talents that we have, you know, and we have using it, uh, much will be given more. And you guess what? You will have an abundance. And whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken away from them. You know, this passage is taken from uh, the parable whereby Jesus is talking about there is this uh, very rich uh, master, you know, and he's going away uh, for a while. In fact, he, he, he goes away for a long time. And he has three servants, you know. The first servants, he gave him five bags of gold. The second one, two bags of gold. And the last one, one bag of gold. And we know the answer, right? The one with five bags of gold produces ten, you know. Uh, the one with two bags of gold produces uh, four, uh, double, uh, you know. But the one with the one bag of gold, what happened? You know, uh, didn't do anything, right? In fact, the Bible even mentioned that he has time. Uh, if we look into it and we study, yeah, the, the person, the servant has time to even actually can, can ask the one with the five bags or, or two bags of gold, how did you do it, right? Uh, but he did not do anything. Yeah, uh, he, he says that. Why? Because the master came back and even tell the, 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 the particular servant, you know, that you could have even uh, do the easiest thing, which is to take this one bag of gold and invest it in the bank itself and earn some interest, right? And uh, he didn't do it. And you know what the master say? You are lazy, you know, you are lazy. So if we don't use our talents, uh, it's a caution here. The Bible calls it laziness. And laziness in that word, where Jesus mentioned is equal, equate uh, to wicked. He says lazy and wicked. And in some translation, it talks about untrustworthy or even a bad person. You know? So we know that when we don't uh, use our talent, which we have, which we can, you know, uh, in our church, well, uh, there are many uh, of us are, are using it, you know. Uh, but when we don't Use it, you know, the, the, the word of God says that uh, 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 to beware uh, of the laziness uh, that will creep into. And it causes wickedness of the heart, you know. And it gives a bad perception uh, to the master, to God itself, you know. Okay, all right. So let's move on. Okay, the next one is that um, we honor the Lord with our bodies, okay. Let me just read uh, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 6, uh, 16, verse 19, okay? It says here that, uh, Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you now, do you not, do you not know that your bodies are what are temples of the Holy Spirit? Isn't it true? Jesus lives in you. Jesus does not live in the Holy of Holies in the temples anymore, you know. Through the baptism of the Holy Spirit as we receive Christ, you know, uh, into our lives. He is living, he is moving in you today. And he says, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You know, church, this is the word of God. And God's word says that, specifically, he says that we should honor God with our bodies. Can I just share here, you know, uh, uh, you know, some of us, uh, I mean, not some of us here, you know, uh, and I know, you know, uh, they are friends and men especially. Huh? I speak huh, from uh, I as a man, you know. Uh, there are times, you know, uh, the temptation will be there. You know, we go for a drink uh, and uh, I do see huh, my friends or so, uh, and they go for a drink and after drink, uh, there will be another extension of the activity. And suddenly there is a woman involved. And uh, from there, uh, that's where all the problem happens, right? Uh, 
uh, a mistress can happen, you know, uh, maybe then uh, a, a, a broken uh, relationship can, uh, can happen. And you know what? It dishonors uh, God itself. Because the command here in 1 Corinthians, it says that we should honor God with our bodies. So flee from this temptation of uh, sexual immorality. Uh, that is very, ramp- I mean, that, that is rampant here in today's world. And in fact, it's also uh, uh, becomes like a normal, you know, that we see, you know. So let's avoid this. Amen. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. So we honor God by being kind to the poor. Wow. Okay. By being kind to the poor brings honor to the Lord. Proverbs 19, 17, it says that when you give to the poor, it's like lending to the Lord. Who wants to lend to uh, your friend? Huh? Uh, let's give him a choice. Huh? Do you want to lend to your friend or lend to the Lord? You know, I would want to lend uh, to God himself. Do you know why? Because the word uh, says, uh, uh, it says because God will pay you back. You know, And that is a guarantee in the scripture itself. You know? And uh, how do we know about this guarantee and how do we get this guarantee is that when we give to the poor, you know. I've seen uh, friends who give to the poor, you know, they are never in lack. You know, people who, who, are, uh, who help the poor, you know, by in, 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 many, uh, in money, in, in many means, uh, uh, normally uh, they are living a life that is uh, full of satisfaction because the Lord pays back uh, in so many ways. Okay, let's move on. We honor the Lord uh, by being uh, a living sacrifice to Him. Okay? And uh, Romans 12 verse 1, it says that, Therefore, I urge you, you know, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, that we offer our bodies as living sacrifice. Uh, we do not present our body uh, by sacrificing ourselves, but we present it uh, because we are already holy. Uh, it is an acknowledgement uh, that we are holy, you know, and that is the living sacrifice uh, that Jesus uh, has made, you know, uh, on the cross by acknowledging that, you know, uh, then it becomes pleasing uh, to God, right? And this honors uh, the Lord also, okay? So we have come uh, to the end of the first part, uh, of honoring God uh, of this part, uh, particular point. Okay, so now let's move, move on to the next point and it talks about uh, honoring others. Okay, now this is what I want you all to do. Okay, I know uh, you have uh, either a PC or a phone uh, or a laptop in front of you right now. Okay, and there is a chat box. Okay, there is a chat box. And we did this actually in our Puchong CG, which is led by uh, Michelle and Bernard. I thought it was really good. And I uh, and, and, and we want to do it today here. Yeah? And this speaks about honoring people, honoring others. We're going to go through the points. Okay. So as we go through, I hope the Lord will speak to your hearts, you know, and I want you to uh, type into the chat box something that you want to honor someone that you want to honor uh, uh, it could be a person a friend uh, in church uh, it could be a leader uh, that has helped you in your walk of faith okay uh, for instance uh, your CG leader or one of the pastors or a ministry leader you know uh, I want you to type into the chat box but don't send it yet uh. type that word don't send it yet okay until I will say send, then only you press the enter button or you press the, the submit or press the send button. Huh? Can you do that? Okay. So type just only a karangan, okay? Don't have to type so so long. Okay. Just one sentence or two sentences. Huh? Someone that you want to thank. Huh? Uh, example, huh? uh, you can say that okay, I, I want to thank God for Pastor Peter, you know, because uh he has uh he's been so generous, yeah, and uh, through his teaching. He has blessed my life, you know, and uh, has caused transformation in my life. Uh, that's an example. Uh, you don't have to copy and put exactly, okay? So uh, think of something as we go through this point and key in. And then as we reach to the end of this uh, second part, I want you to press enter and I will ask uh, uh, John, our MC, to read it out. Okay? Ken? All right? So let's go through. Uh, honoring others, okay? Uh, who do we honor? The Lord wants us to honor 
our parents. Okay? A community with core values, uh, besides understanding uh, uh, the many ways uh, how we honor God. Now we're talking about honoring others. And the first thing is that we honor our parents. You know, I'm so great that I'm so grateful, I'm so privileged, I call it uh, an opportunity that my mom uh, stays with me, you know, and I can uh, help her, I can uh, 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 give to her, attend to her need, you know, uh, I can uh, reach out to her, you know, uh, and it's a privilege uh, to have my mom staying with me, you know, and the Bible says here in Matthew 19, 19, it says, honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. Church, let's just, let's take care yeah, of our uh, of our parents. Uh. Some of them are old. Some of them are widowed. You know, uh, maybe going through some health challenges. Uh. Let's look into their needs uh, and uh, help them. Uh. Speak pride about them. You know, uh, speak good about them. You know, let's move on. Okay, uh, this one. Okay, <laughs> uh, we need to honor our policemen. Okay. <laughs> we need to honor our government, our politician. First Peter 2, chapter 2, verse 13, 17, it says that make God, uh, make the master proud of you by being good citizens. Respect the authorities. Whatever their level, they are God emissaries for keeping order. It's God's will that by doing good, it might cure the ignorance of the fool who thinks you are in a danger to society. So exercise your freedom by serving God, okay? Not by breaking the rules, okay? So uh, if it's a red light, it is a red light, okay? Uh, if the police is uh, 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 stopping you, don't bribe, okay? Treat everyone you meet with dignity. Love your spiritual family. Revere God. Respect the government. And we thank God, right? We have a, a government uh, today whom uh, we uh, have a good hope uh, for change, uh, for good uh, to come uh, for our future and for our country. Okay? All right? So let's honor our authorities. Next, we also, uh, uh, the Lord asks us uh, to honor uh, the elders of the church, the leaders of the church the CG leaders, the ministry leaders also. In 1 Timothy 5, verse 17, it says, the elders who direct the affairs of the church are well worthy of double honor. Wow. Uh, those of you who are leaders uh, in ministry, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in, in, in CG, you know, uh, the pastoral team, uh, worthy of double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. Amen. Amen. Uh, the youth leaders uh, included uh, from Chinese church, from uh, Borneo group, you know, well done, well done. Uh, okay. Let's honor them. Okay. Next is that we look into honoring one another. Uh, the Bible says, okay, Romans 12 verse 10, it says that let us be devoted to one another in love, that we honor one another above ourselves. I like the word above ourselves, which means that we put others first. You know, in today's society, right, it's all about what can we get, right? Oh, we, we, we join a church, what can we get from here? You know, we join uh, a ministry, what can I get from here? How about the other way around, you know, that we join uh, a ministry, what can we serve? What can we give? Uh, people in the in, in the community, how can we uh, uh, honor them? People takes priority, you know, rather than things that we want to uh, get for our lives. Can I encourage us to devote to one another? You know, the word devote there, it means there is a change in priority, right? You devote to something, right? You devote to sports. That means sports becomes your priority. But here in Romans 12, it says that you devote yourself to one another, to everyone in TNCC. Huh? How wonderful it is, right? Okay? Amen. Let's move on. We honor uh, the Lord by honoring our marriage. 
Hebrews 13.4, it says here that marriage should be honoured by all and the marriage marriage bed uh, should be kept pure. Uh, it's not the bed sheet. Uh, it's talking about uh, your marriage relationship should be kept pure. Right? Uh, husband, love your wives. You know? Uh, Honour them. You know, when you are away from home, be an honourable person. You know? Uh, do not allow yourself to be tempted uh, and to fall into temptation uh, that you be, you are subjected to adultery or even uh, sexually immoral acts. You know, and you can see that the word of God is very uh, uh, strong in this. Huh? In fact, it is repeated a couple of times in New Testament because the Lord knows, you know, that this is uh, something important for us to to look into as we honor Him, right? As we honor uh, our marriage, okay? Okay, uh, we have reached to that point uh, of finishing the second part already, all right? So can I uh, can I ask, uh, I think all of you have already, ready to, uh, already key in, uh, okay? So I will go to the chat box now, and if you can go to your chat box, uh, okay? Uh, can I encourage you, uh, if you have key in ready, okay, get ready to stand, okay? Ready? One, two, and three. Okay. Wow. Okay, uh, John, can you help us to read? Uh, MC, can you help us to read uh, uh, the, the messages that's been key in? Uh, yes, okay. The first one's from Shemaine. Would like to honor Pastor Peter and Auntie Stephen for taking the leap of faith in 2009 by being the shepherd of TNCC, preaching the gospel of grace to all, along with the pastoral team and all leaders in ministries. Then from Bern and Mitch, I thank God for Pastor Peter, whom I look up to as a spiritual father. I also thank God for Bernard, who is my God sent encourager. So I suppose that's from Mitch. Yep. YWC, CG family, you join C, I want to thank my fellow men's fellowship brothers here tonight, i.e. Uncle Leach, John Wong, and Adrian, for the support, sharing of the word, and encouragement, which has helped shape my walk with the Lord. God bless you, my fellow brothers. From uh, Matt, I'm thankful to Jesus for my CG leaders, Eric and Gladys, for their great devotion and faithfulness to lead and serve. I appreciate all you do. From Woon, Thank you, Pastor Peter and Auntie Stephen, for being a part of the S19CG to help and support me as a CG leader. Vincent Yam, thank God for all my fellow pastors, teachers, and my CG members. Bernard Wong, to all TNCC pastors whom I look up to dearly and really appreciate all the guidance and encouragement. CP Ng and Doris, honor our spiritual father, Pastor Peter and elders for the word, honor our spouse as husband and wife. From Susan, Pastor Susan, we want to honor Pastor Peter and Auntie Stephen for their hearts and how they lead, giving us such an example to follow. Junie and Lawrence, we want to honor everyone in TNCC, pastors, friends, who have given us all the guidance and great encouragement, especially to Pastor Peter and Stephen, Pastor Sam, May, Bernard, and Alex, I honor my wife for being so selfless, kind and loving, and those who serve without expecting anything in return. Pastor Sam, that's quite a lot. Wow, that's a lot. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, keep it coming, you know. Oh, I oh, still got another one. Let me, maybe we take this as the last one, huh? then we continue. Yeah. All right. From Paul, I, th I thank the Lord for Pastor Peter, who has welcomed me and my wife when we first attended TNCC. And thankful to God for my CG leader, Pastor Alex, Pastor Karen, and all Bangsa CG members. So as you have said, let that be the last one. And I will just close it here. I just read the last one by Philip. Okay, <laughs> so John Wong, Karen Chong, Mei Chow, uh, Mickey, Chia, Bernard Wong, Michelle, for the countless blessing you have given me. Can you see that the church is so easy for us to honor uh, one another? Uh, in this part of uh, honoring others, you know, can I encourage you that even after today's uh, 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 lesson, you know, that you continue uh, to do this, you know, uh, perhaps you can uh, 
direct message them, you know, uh, something to encourage uh, uh, your friends or leaders or someone, you know. And it's really great, right? Uh, and, and, and we see uh, how the community is blessed uh, by each one uh, giving encouragement to one another. So let's move on, okay? To the last part, uh, which is actually honoring ourselves, okay? So um, there are just two points here which I want to bring about, you know. Uh, the Lord says in James 4, verse 6 and 7, He says that, uh, but, God great, but God gives, huh? More grace, uh, therefore, he says, uh, he receives, he resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You know, we honor ourselves uh, by being humble, and uh, humility uh, is is a state. Uh, uh, humility is not just walking and bowing our heads down or maybe uh, the manner which we talk or, or even how we wear. Uh, uh, true humility actually comes from uh, none other uh, but the example uh, where Christ, uh, that Jesus has actually exemplified. You know? And uh, each time he says, you know, that uh, I must do the will of the Father. I must do the one uh, that has sent me, you know. So true humility, uh, being humble, uh, is actually uh, a position of ourselves that we are constantly in agreement uh, with God, in agreement to what His Word says about you. Today, what does the Word of God says about you? You know, church, it says what? It says that you are His beloved, right? It says that you are a new creation. Today, you know, the old has passed, the new is here. Second Corinthians 5.17 A humble person always agrees to God's uh, our, our desire, to God's word, uh, to God's command, you know. And, and he is always, uh, uh, the heart's position is always uh, in, in full of awe. Uh, in, in recognition that, uh, that that the Lord uh, is 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 His Savior, you know, Amen. So we honor the Lord by being humble, okay, as we honor ourselves. Okay, the next, the, the last part in honoring ourselves is that we pursue the righteousness of God and to pursue His love, you know. Contrary to whatever that is happening today. Uh, and the pursuit of our busyness uh, in life, and I know many are working today, uh, and, and perhaps those are in school or so, uh, that the world's goal, uh, the world's teaching is that you should pursue your career, you should pursue your wealth. In Matthew 6.33, he says, you know, the word of God says, and it's contrary to, to, uh, to, to what? the standards of the world is, it says that we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Proverbs 21, 21, it says that whoever pursues righteousness and love finds what? Finds life. Correct or not? The world will tell you that, oh, you should pursue your career first, you know, your degree and all these things, then only life is established. But most of the time, that's, there's so much disappointment, there's so much uh, discouragement because we end up that, wow, all this time spent and then life is meaningless after achieving uh, the wealth that we have and such. Yeah, you can buy a certain happiness, but at the end, it ends up empty. But guess what the Word of God says? That as we pursue righteousness and love, we find life and then follows with prosperity, and honor. Amen? And honor. Okay? So we honor ourselves, right, by pursuing the righteousness of God and His love. Okay? So we have reached to the end, and I'd like to close here uh, with a simple uh, story. And uh, we are aware of this story, actually. It is uh, the story of Jesus 
uh, that uh, uh, that meets Zacchaeus. Right? Not, Jesus saw Zacchaeus, and Zacchaeus was uh, on the tree. Right? Zacchaeus climbed the tree because uh, he is short, you know. And Jesus saw Zacchaeus. I believe that Jesus saw Zacchaeus not because that he's on the tree. Okay, Jesus can see, uh, he can even sense uh, uh, that somebody touched him. Uh, and then suddenly the woman with the issue of, uh, of blood suddenly uh, was healed himself. Uh. Jesus saw Zacchaeus because he wants to go and have a meal uh, with him. And what is the response of Zacchaeus? And Zacchaeus invited Jesus to his house, correct? Not? And we know the story is that as Zacchaeus dined with Jesus, uh, the statement, uh, the, the, what, what follows is very important. Zacchaeus told the Lord, he says that, whom I have cheated, I will repay back four times. Amazing, right? If Zacchaeus have cheated you, uh, 1,000 ringgit, then you get 4,000 ringgit. Lah, oh? uh, it's not that it is good to be cheated, but that's how change, uh, the transformation that has happened uh, to, to Zacchaeus. And, uh, and Zacchaeus mentioned this also uh, in, 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 in the Bible that he will give away half of his possession uh, to those who are in need, you know. And why this happens? Because Zacchaeus has an experience, remember? He has an experience with the living God, you know. And the living God was impacting his life, you know. It changes him. And out comes the natural desire to honor uh, the Lord back again, you know. And once we honor the Lord back again, you know, you, you know what happens? People around us are blessed. People around Zacchaeus are blessed. The one who got cheated, of course, was blessed four times. The one who didn't even get cheated, his half of his wealth is being is being uh, given you know, to, to them. And they receive uh, his possession. You know, there is transformation uh, taking place, you know. So this is the, the uh, I mean, it's an amazing thing uh, as uh, our church uh, embark on the uh, uh, core values uh, of honoring that each of us, you know, as we learn uh, about all these values, you know, let us allow the Lord to speak to our hearts and transform us, you know. And you know what? Others will be blessed, you know. Others around us will be impacted also. Okay? Amen? All right. So, I think, wow. Okay, back to you, uh, John. Okay, thank, thank you so much, Pastor Sam, for this session on honoring. Uh, uh, we have taken a, just the right amount of time. So, I think what we can do now is to just, uh, for everyone to thank Pastor Sam. If you can turn on your camera and unmute the microphone, then show him your appreciation. There'll be no questions tonight, Pastor Sam. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you. John. Thank you. 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 Thank